What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and I'm here with my main man, Dave Savulich. Hey, buddy. For another segment of Whiskey Wednesday. This is our short, sweet, to-the-point episodes where we're going to dive into things going on in our world, some hot topics in the short-term rental world, as well as some questions that you guys send in. And Dave's got all of the stuff that we need. And so we'll dive right in. What do we got on the agenda today, brother? Hey, let's, let's start off with, uh, you know, you and I are both about the same age. So let's talk about something a little kind of fun and and uh let's take a trip back memory lane okay you know? so right, back in the go. 80s we were young kids yeah um w- tell me something unique about your your experience as an 80s child and, and i'll give you an example yeah. give you a couple examples so dude we rode bikes everywhere yeah. skateboards like yeah. i mean i was a skater like yeah. i mean i guess you can call it not really but i had a skateboard yeah. and i thought i was cool and i couldn't really do anything, but it was fun to have a skateboard, right? I got one for Christmas. Um, we had black and I remember having black and white TVs yeah. and be, having like literally channels two, four, five, 13, and maybe 30. Channel 30 came in once in a while. Yeah. And you literally had to go up and turn the, the knob to turn it on and the volume up and down and, you know, to, to turn it to station. There's no remotes, you know what I yeah. mean? And it was black and white and small. I just remember sitting on the, like a little little coffee table yeah um <clears throat> phones uh, obviously the cords yeah like come on it, we, and the longer the cord the better because you could like hide in a room and then somebody <laughs> exactly. then your brothers and sisters are on are you still on yeah are you still on <laughs> he's like i'm on <laughs> quit getting on yeah call waiting that was like a that was the, that was that new was that greatest, was like 90s yeah right? that was that was the 80s thing that came yeah. up, i mean you know and then and the worst thing was you knew when you called and it kept ringing you're like i know you hear they hear this because uh-huh. it's they have call waiting <laughs> and they won't answer you know yeah, that's uh, awesome. other thing that i thought were uh sony walkmans yeah i mean i remember in junior high the yellow, the yellow, um, the Sony. The yellow yeah. sport Sony yeah. Walkman that I would use on the bus going to the junior high basketball games. And man, I thought, and I had Alabama yeah. in the, in, in the tape player cassette. And right. I thought, man, this is, this couldn't get any better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Those are, those are the days. My, my biggest memories of the eighties was so first rad, remember rad when oh, rad yeah. came out, yeah. like I was the like bike, the, the, the BMX bike. bikers, yep. you yep. know, and, and we would make bike jumps every day, every day on the sidewalk. You'd grab the old wood, you'd grab a piece yep. of plywood and yep. then see how big you could make your bike jump. And then, you know, your buddies would lay on the ground and you'd yeah. jump over them. And yeah. like, those were like, th- that Nobody was like a daily thing. Like I've never seen a kid like making a, a, a rickety old bike jump and having their buddies lay and see how many kids yeah. you could jump over. Yeah. Right. I remember doing that. <laughs> and and yeah. parents were like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, that was that's cool. Totally good. Yeah, that was yeah. normal. Why don't yeah. you guys make a jump and see how many you can jump over? Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the other thing that, and I don't know if kids do this anymore either, but we always would build clubhouses. There was these fields by yeah. our house and we, and yeah. I lived down in the city, but there was these like old, you know, abandoned lots and stuff. And it had, they had trees on them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we would go build these huts or these yeah. clubhouses, you know, yeah. and you'd have the no girls allowed. Like it was literally like the, the old uh, little rascals type clubhouse. Yeah. We used to do yeah. that all the time. And we'd have all the stuff we weren't supposed to have that we found over the years, like the old Playboys, we'd, we'd hide yeah. them in there and, you know, they, you'd find an old, <laughs> oh, yeah. you'd treasures, that, yeah, anything you, that you didn't anything want anybody, you didn't want anybody yep. to know you had, yep. you'd throw it in the clubhouse yep. and only your buddies and you were allowed in there. And, yep. I mean, get a six a, pack of, of Coke and, yeah. you know, snacks, <laughs> put as many snacks as in there. We just right. leave them in there and make sure you had them. Right. Totally. Right. That's I remember awesome. one of my my buddies, he had a pack of cigarettes he put in there and none of us <laughs> smoked them. We just had them in there because it's like, yeah. hey, yeah. anything bad that yeah. you weren't supposed to have, you put yeah. in the clubhouse. You, you know? find an old uh, can of chew on the ground. Yeah, Dude, you throw it in the clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We, one time we found an old turtle in a canal and uh, we, we had this, we the turtle. Yep. Was the, now the, the clubhouse. The, the turtle's. <laughs> Now the mascot of the clubhouse. Yeah, pets. Clubhouse. Yeah, everything. Oh, it that's was awesome. awesome. Yeah, so it was. Uh, that's awesome. Those are the those are my memories of the the that's old ladies. Awesome. Yeah, that was it's fun. it's funny. You and I were. I think we were driving in the car talking about that. They just don't. They don't do any of those things anymore. Oh, yeah. I'll tell yeah. you. Sam and I were driving, and he we were talking about some of the things that I did as a kid and crazy. Th- he's like, man, we just don't do that stuff anymore. And I says, the reason why you don't do that is because kids today spend their time on their phone right. and that that's what they do. Like when we were bored, we would come up with things to do and we'd be like, well, let's figure something out. Let's, you know, yeah. squirt guns or let's go outside or let's do this or that. They go right to, you know, reels and social media and they spend their time doing that. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, they just aren't as active. And, and some of the things are like, I mean, 
they I guess over the years they figured out it was kind of dangerous, you know, like the, the, yeah. Jobs, the, yeah. the parents are like, eh. but yeah. you know, it's, it's interesting. Like treat or uh, Wyatt and grace. They love, they actually do go build like stuff huts out and the, stuff. Yeah. And they love doing that. Like yeah. they love going and building their little huts and stuff. Yeah. They don't, they're, they're not like our huts. They're not right. like our clubhouses, but, still, but it, it, it's, at least uh, they're active and outside <laughs> doing stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. They heard those stories. They're like, we want to try that. It'll yeah. be kind of fun. You know, so uh, that's yeah, awesome. Good. Well, good. I'm glad, glad we took that little trip down memory lane. Oh, yeah, that's, those nice. were good times. They you were know? good times. I'm glad we, fun. especially you know. now that summer's starting, you know, right. those, that's when, right. that's when all the, that's when yeah. all the action happened back in the day. That's awesome. You're out of school. All right. So let's talk about, uh, Let's talk about lessons learned through your weekly podcast. You know, we've talked about who you would have on there and, you know, the, we've, we've grown our podcast to your, you know, vacation rental revolution podcast quite significantly. We have, you know, almost a couple hundred now episodes with our whiskey Wednesdays and our, and our weekly, but I think it's very unique what you have decided to do with your podcast. And nobody does this out there. Uh, none of the people in our space, at least that I know of, I, I know some of them had podcasts, but the one thing that I think is super unique about the way you do your podcast here at Vodas is you have members, Vodacy members, come on and you have them tell their story. They're unedited, they're unscripted, they're, hey, tell me the good, bad, the pros, the cons, the challenges, the upside, the downside, everything. And I think that's super powerful. You know, most people have software companies on or, hey, use these resources or these guys or this and that, which I, I think there's a part and a, and a place for those at times. But your podcasts are really, they're real raw and they're really about members. I mean, we probably have, what, 50, 60 podcasts where we have members that come on to tell their story about their experience through Vodacy and short-term yeah. rentals. Yeah, it's it's an interesting because when I started the podcast, a lot of them were solo episodes, right? I started off, it was just me talking about the industry, mm -hmm. what we were learning, how to succeed, all that stuff. And then as we started to grow Vodacy, uh, you know, we and we started to have a collective footprint that was fairly large, right? At this stage in the game, we're, we, we've, I mean, we've got 3,000 people in our high-end paid mastermind group. That's yeah. a lot of yeah. experience, collective experience inside of a group. And I started to think, hey, there's, there's a lot of knowledge to be shared. You know, I always say my goal with Vodacy, my goal with the podcast is to help people walk into the va vacation rental investing with their eyes wide open. Right. You hear me say that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to walk into this with your eyes wide open. Well, in order to do that, and the easiest way to do that is to hear some of the ups and downs and the challenges, right. how somebody overcame the challenges. The other thing that I think is really important is the, you know, a lot of people are a lot closer to financial freedom than I think they think they are, right? right? I think it's it's this elusive thing, like having your bills paid but from passive income investments that you've made over the years. And most people don't know, I mean, I don't. a lot of people don't really even know somebody that's financially free from their passive investments, right. let alone they're not going to get there with their 401k investments and their typical retirement plans that most people do. Yeah. And so they think they're a lot further away, further removed from that than they really are. And so my goal, the other thing, part of it was I want people to start to believe that they, they right. can do this, right? right? See and examples. It, and if they hear, I believe the fastest way to believe you can do something is to hear other people in your shoes doing it, right? right? And so right. rather than listen to Sean talk about it, why don't I bring on people that were from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds. And if you're going to hear stories of people when you listen to that podcast, and we hear this all the time, you know, this is one of our, you know, it turned into, hey, when somebody comes and wants to work with us, at they're like, I listened to the podcast for so long, and I started to believe I could do it because I listened to so-and-so, and I listened to this other person. Right. And right. I'm really grateful that we have a group of people that are willing to share that story because they're an inspiration to somebody else to help them start to believe that they can actually do it, right? When you have a school teacher on there that is, you know, doing this and buying properties and starting to create passive income enough to replace his active income, and you hear that story, you're like, well, man, you know, I'm, I make more than a school teacher and I used to think I couldn't do this, right? right and right. and so, or, you know, the, the high income earners and the doctors and the business owners that just don't have a free second in the day, they're like, well, I could probably still do this because there's other people like me doing it, right? right. And so right. I love, and that's why we like the Whiskey Wednesdays too, because you and I can now talk about 
you know, my take on, on the industry and things right. like that. But we don't, you know, we don't bring on sponsors. We don't bring on, I mean, we're, we're a large enough podcast now that we get sponsorship offers all the time and I won't do it because I don't want to feel like I have to promote right. You're selling something, all yeah. these other things. And not that there's not a, not room for those conversations, right? I've had some, I've had some industry experts on, I've had some of that in the past on and um, I don't know, about a year ago, I started saying, I'm not going to do that. Just not because I don't like those conversations, but because everybody else is having those conversations. Right. I like having the conversations of people that are in the, in the trenches, rolling up their sleeves. And there's so many lessons learned every single episode. I never know where it's going to go. I never know right. what lessons we're going to pull from it. Right. I just know there's going to be lessons in there somewhere. Right. And so having those conversations, listen to somebody, their backstory, how they got into the game, the challenges that they had to overcome because everybody has to overcome challenges. And when you start to hear other people overcoming challenges, you also believe you can overcome those same yeah, challenges, yeah. whether it's time, whether it's money, whether it's knowledge. We know most people's challenges are a version of one of those three things or a combination of one of those three right. things. And so, you know, for me, I love those conversations. I know that other people like them because we get the feedback on it. And and then you and I on, on Wednesdays, get a chance to, you know, hash out some of the, some of the things that are going on in the world right. of, of short term rentals. And, you know, there's just a lot of lessons learned from somebody else that's down the road, a few steps ahead of you. Well, and they're, they're raw. There, there's not a lot of prep for them. We ask them to be on the podcast if they're willing. Mm -hmm. And, and most everybody says, yes, mm -hmm. some people are a little shy and don't feel very comfortable getting in front of the camera. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why may, they may not do it, but they come on and there's really no prep for it. It's just, hey, come tell your story. Yeah. Sean's going to ask questions. It's going to be very general. It's going to be very casual. And it's it's the truth. It, it's unedited. Yeah. And we, we put those things out. And the other thing that I think is super important is, you know, we get a lot of people that ask us, hey, do, can I talk to somebody in your, in your mentorship? Right. Can I talk to somebody <laughs> in your group? Or how do I know this is, you know, really going to work and all this? And I, and I tell them, guys, Go to our podcast. We have 50, 60, 70 people in yeah. our group. That's the best testimonial you could ever get with somebody on there telling you about their story, telling you how you did it, how they did it, the good, bad, the ugly, the pros mm -hmm. and cons. And, and the other thing is nobody else does that. Right. Nobody yeah. else. And I don't know if they're fearful that they may not have the people to be able to do it, but we were super confident. Like we know ours works. We know we do a great job. We know the experience that you have. It's like, Hey, let's get our members on, let them tell the story. They yeah. can tell the story better than we can of the success the Odyssey has. And, and, and I think that's super powerful. Yeah. And I think it is. And I, and it's, you know, and you know, we've had the, the luxury of been doing this for a long right. time, longer than a lot of other people in the game. And so mm -hmm. we do have a lot more collective experience to share. And that may, you know, I'm sure other people would be willing to share it once they start to build that right. up. But it is nice to be able to go listen to, you know, a year and a half worth of conversations. And strictly every Friday, that's what we do. Yeah. Tune in, subscribe, and you can listen to a new story and a new person every single Friday, right? Yeah. Weekly, you can talk to or hear somebody else talking about their journey and their story. Like you said, there's not a lot of prep. It is casual um, for a reason, right? We don't want we don't want people to feel one like it. it I, you can tell when something's scripted. If you you know when you right. watch the news, right? right. They know the 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 interviewer and up, the interviewee. Yeah. They both they both know the questions that are coming up, and they've prepared and they've scripted it out, and they know exactly what they want to say. And we just want it to come from the heart more than anything. Right. Like, hey, I want you to share the story. All of my all of our interviewees that we talk to, you know, before the episode, I'm just like, hey, listen, I'm, uh, is there anything you don't want to talk about? I always ask them that because right. I want to be respectful, and. All, you know, I have yet to have somebody that says, yes, I don't want to talk about this. Everybody's like, no, well, we're an open book. That's yeah. why we're part of, of, of your world. You know, that's the, that's the, that's what you believe in. We believe in the same thing and we want to share our experience because we listened to somebody else a year ago, or we listened to so-and-so's story, you know, six months ago, and it's what got us over the edge. And yeah. so of wanting to do it, and it's not necessarily, I mean, we love, I, I, you know, I would be lying if I didn't say and think that we're the best in the business. I do think right. we're the best in the business. I do think we care about somebody's success more than anybody else out there. And there's people that I know personally that care about people's success a lot. And so it's not saying anything bad about their programs or them personally. I just believe that we're the best. We've right. been doing it longer. I've got more right. experience in this game than anybody that I know that's teaching it. Yeah. And 
So, but that's the goal is, I feel like that's a byproduct of working with somebody. The goal of those podcasts is to get somebody to believe that they can build lifestyle and financial freedom for themselves, period. They don't have to come from trust fund money. They don't have to have a silver, silver spoon in their mouth. And so many people think they're so much further away from that than they are. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. We don't apologize for that. We always say, hey, listen, if you're willing to roll up your sleeves for three to five years, we're pretty confident that almost anybody in any situation in a five-year run can build the life they don't want to take a vacation from, which means a version of lifestyle and financial freedom for themselves. And I I, I believe that 100%. We've seen it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times of people from all different walks of life, mostly just average, everyday Americans that are, they want more and they want to build more on their own, right? That, That idea of, self-reliance, personal responsibility. They've got that built into them. They've got to figure out how to leverage their active income and their current situation into building that passive income empire that they want to build. And it, and you know, when you've never done it or you don't know people who have done it, it feels like it's a lot further off than it really right. is for a lot of people. Yeah. And that's what I want them to hear and see from those episodes. I, and I think it's great. And so I think, you know, if you're interested and you're deciding if this is the path you want to take, go listen to the Vacation (laughs) Rental Revolution podcast by Sean Moore. I mean, it's awesome. It'll get you all the details you want. You'll hear some testimonials. You'll hear real stories. And uh, I I think the podcasts are awesome. So that's a great that's a great way to do it. All right. Let's jump into a couple questions. Okay. Um, So do you have to self-manage the first year? to take advantage of the short-term rental tax benefits, or can you get the same tax tax benefits or similar if you use a full service management group? So that's a, been a question it's recently. A great question. It's a great question. It's a common question, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm just going to call it out how it is. There's a lot of even CPA saying you can't do certain things that are absolutely perfectly fine for you to do right. now. When it comes to the tax advantages of short-term rentals, there's a short-term rental loophole that is, and and the reason it's a short-term rental loophole is because it applies to properties that have an average lease length of less than seven days. So I want to put that out on the front end, right? right. Before I even go into any of this, obviously I'm not a CPA, right? right? I'm not giving you anybody tax advice. We're not giving you any legal or tax advice. Talk to a CPA, right? I have CPAs that do all this. In fact, if you're going to run down this road and take advantage of these, these tax advantages, you want a CPA working for you to do it. Right. But I know I'm going to tell you that, you know, the, the rules that are in place and some of the misconceptions that are out there. A lot of so if that's the case, you're allowed to what they call materially participate with in a property, which is putting a certain amount of hours in, certain amount of things you have to do. I won't go through all the criteria, right. but there's a there are some criteria you have to check. There's boxes that you have to check off in order to qualify for material participation. If you materially participate in that property, now you can write off the depreciation, the losses, everything else, which depreciation is the biggest one, the bonus depreciation specifically Mm -hmm. is the biggest because it's a paper loss that you can write off against your active income. That's very, very unique in the real estate world. Typically, IRS looks at different different buckets of income, and, and the, uh, there's three of them, but the two most common that get, that people are talking about are passive income and active income. Your active income is your W-2 job, right? right. That's where you pay the majority of your taxes. Right. Passive income is your investments like real estate. Well, normally, if you're not a real estate professional and you and you and you don't take advantage of like the the loophole of short term yeah. rentals all of your losses and depreciation can only go against your passive income not against your active mm-hmm. income so you're still paying taxes right. in your job right right and so one of the big misconceptions out there is that what the things that we talk about when I have Mike Pine on the podcast, you can only do that if you're a real estate professional. First of all, that is absolutely not true. They're 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 confusing the fact that they don't like because that to materially participate, the rules to check off are are pretty similar. They're different, but they're similar to what real estate professional status is is involved in. And most people will not qualify for a real estate professional because to be a real estate professional, you have to have that as your primary source of income and you have to spend more time on right. that than anything, than anything else. else. Okay. You can't yeah. do that if you have a full-time job, right? right. It doesn't work. So mm-hmm. so right out of the gate, you're not most people are not, not going to be able to do that. Yeah. And so then when they hear their CPA say that, they're like, well, I can't do what Sean's talking about. It's not true. Second misconception is because there is a time element involved in material participation in which is one of them, the gold standard is 500 hours of participation on your property 
when you buy the, and right. every single year you're going to claim and, and write off your depreciation, right? So if it's bonus depreciation, typically that's year one, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so year one, I need to spend 500 hours on my property. Well, when you're in acquisition phase, when you're in setup phase, there's a lot of hours that you can start tracking. Right. You know, yeah. you've got you've got meetings with designers, you've got setting up a property, you've got meetings with realtors, you've got inspections travel, you have to go through, to travel, yeah. all these different things that add up pretty quickly on the on the property, right? And so I materially participate, I bonus depreciate my properties. On the last two, I have not had, I have full service management partner, I don't manage any of my own properties, right. and I still qualify. So. Good. That is absolutely, but you have to you have to make sure that you're checking the boxes and getting the hours in. Now, there's another kind of the the next level down that says, or you can spend a hundred hours, and more than anybody else. And this is where if you spend if you buy the properties and but I have a full service manager. If the full service manager spends, spends two hundred and one hours, yeah. you don't qualify because yeah. they spent more than you, yeah. right? And so that's where that's where understanding. The, the boxes that you have to check off intimately will tell you whether you can or can't do it in your situation yeah. with a management partner or not a management partner. I've never had, uh, I've never managed any of my own properties and I take advantage of this, this tax loophole all the time. Last year on one property, I reduced, I had a write-off of de bonus depreciation of $244,000. It reduced my taxes $95,000 less I had to pay Uncle Sam. Yeah. So understanding it and not is listening it, to the people huge. that are like, hey, yes. you can't do that. Right. When, you know, I, I I pull back the layers of the onion and would talk to a CPA that really knows how to do this, the rules and the regulations and the boxes you have to check because there are some, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do it with, that, with full service management partners managing your property. Perfect. I love how you said that. That's a great explanation because that's that comes up in and mostly because people just don't understand. Yeah. And so the important thing is to make sure that a CPA understands short term rentals and it can help you and guide you through that strategy. In yeah. our Vodacy Mastermind, we have a coaching program that we have coaching calls every single week. And one of those calls is a tax expert that does a call every Thursday. Yeah. You can jump on and ask him specifics and he'll guide you through that. You can decide to use him or you can take the strategy back to your own CPA. But the key is to understand that strategy. Yeah, and understand, so, yeah, what you have to do to qualify. Yeah. Right. There's always yeah. there's always things you're gonna have to do to qualify. And if you don't and you're not willing to do it or you don't have the time to do it, you're not gonna qualify, you're not gonna get that benefit. Right. Perfect. And so there's there's ways to do it for sure. And that's another another point of, you know, surround yourself with the right, right people. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And there's so many opinions online of, of you can't do this, you can't right. do that, you right. do, this, is, this is how you do it. There is not, especially when it comes to taxes, and especially when it comes to these, you know, these strategies that you're gonna go about, everybody doesn't fall into the same bucket, right? right? right. Because somebody really might not have qualified and the reason they didn't qualify is because they had a property manager. That's because that property manager spent more time than they did and they didn't meet the 500 right. hour rule. And right. so they were like, well, you can't do it with a property manager. No, you weren't able to do it because yeah. the way you set it up and strategize, right. that doesn't mean you can't across the board. And this is what I get frustrated with in our industry and outside of our industry, just with the internet in general, is there's these these cut and dry blanket statements right. and almost and almost nothing is cut and dry blanket. There yeah. are, there are, there are some people can do it. Some people can't. There's criteria that have to be met. There's there's situations that work, that situations that don't work. And there's usually not just a cut and dry, yes, you can, right. no, you can't. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, last question. <clears throat> uh, a lot of people set up an LLC for their short-term rental. What's the, the pros and cons for setting the LLC up in the specific state that the property resides in? So, for instance, if, if we live in Utah, but we have a property in Florida, um, does it make sense to set that LLC up in Florida versus an LLC up in Utah? Yeah. It, and, it, and again, this isn't legal yeah, advice. This is suggestions. Yeah, you're thoughts. coming in hot with I some, know, like, but I, I, mean, I mean, really? These are, this is, these are the ones that are coming in right now? This is what's coming up, dude. I'm going right. to test your brain early this morning. <laughs> right. Well, first, yeah, I'm not giving anybody, I mean, any any legal advice right. on setting up their entities. You really should talk to an asset protection attorney, yeah. your CPA, together as the, the three of you should sit down and say, how do I want to set this up? Yeah. Right. And so I can tell you the way that I do it and the way that my attorneys suggest it or CPA suggests right. it is we set up an LLC in each state that we invest in. Right. And so I have a master kind of LLC 
here in Utah. Yeah. I've got, you know, a trust, a bridge, uh, a bridge trust. I've got a, a limited uh, partnership asset protection company in Arizona, like all these. So there's, there's right. layers of all this. Exactly. So I don't want to, and, and I, I don't, yeah. I want people to understand that yes. the, 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 the bigger your portfolio grows, the more money you have, and the more, more your net worth is yeah. all that stuff. It's probably going to be more complicated right. than when you're just starting out. When and, you, and this specifically came up for one property for one person. It's like, hey, I want to get right. my first property and yeah. it's in a state that I don't live in. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So <clears throat> my my attorney says, listen, you're going to have to register in the state that you're operating in regardless. Right. So if, if I have an LLC in Utah and I want to buy a property in Georgia, I'm going to have to register as a foreign entity in Georgia to do business in Georgia anyways. Right. right? And so he's like, you're already going to have to report in Georgia. You're going to have to register as a foreign entity. My suggestion is you have your you have your business LLC in the state that you reside, and right. then when you go buy that property in Georgia, have an LLC for that property. For that property, right? yep. and so um, I, my attorney says, if you're going to buy a second or third or fourth property in Georgia, keep the same LLC. Just have an LLC for every state that you're investing pro- right. into properties, right? right? And mm-hmm. then ultimately, if those properties have significant equity. And they're, you know, like, let's say you have a property that's worth a million dollars and it's been in there for a while and it's mostly paid off and you have a million, you know, let's say you have seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars in equity and you have a brand new property that doesn't have a lot of equity. He would suggest pulling that one out that has a lot of equity and insulating it on its own in its own LLC. Perfect. But, that's great. Yeah. But brand new, um, yeah. it's it's kind of half a dozen of one, sixes of the other, it, whether you have your, have your home state LLC and then you register as yeah. a foreign entity or set it, just set it up in that state. Perfect. So we went from the eighties skateboards and TVs, Jeez, black and white. I, I liked all, how that was going all the way to taxes. And, uh, Jeez, you know what I mean? I, I mean, we I, mean covered, I need to, I need to put a little more whiskey in there. If covered, I have to be a CPA and a freaking attorney on we this. We covered thing. a gamut on there. Hey, yeah. by the way, I got my new, uh, Vodacy shirt. I like it, dude. You look um, good. You I do, haven't you worn do. a Vodacy shirt very often or ever on this show. So yeah. I appreciate, you know, yeah, we are, yeah. we are, you know, promoting Vodacy. So <laughs> we, got the we don't going. sell many things on this and, and we don't do any advertisement, but I'm going to wear my Vodacy shirt today because I'm proud to be Got Odyssey. Modesty, Modesty yeah. shirt on. Awesome, <laughs> Anyways, man. well, that's it for today, buddy. Okay. Good job. Appreciate right. it. Yeah, and, uh, we're, uh, we're, till, we're... till next week, let's uh, let's sign off. We'll wrap, wrap it up. All right, guys. Well, you know the drill. We always appreciate you spending your time with us. We know how valuable it is. We'll wrap up today. At the end of every episode, I ask you two favors. The first one is, if you got any value out of this, you know somebody else who would like to be a part of these conversations, walk in with their eyes wide open to the short-term rail game, listen to some of those conversations we were talking about earlier on those interviews on Fridays, share the show. Those things really do help us. They help us spread the message. They help other people sort of learn about what's going on in the short-term rental world. We try to keep everybody up to date on that. And if you have more than 30 seconds, like or leave us a review on whatever platform you're watching or listening on, those things as well help us with the show and uh, in the rankings and getting it in front of more and more people. So, and the final most important thing that I ask you at the end of every episode is pick that one thing you can do today to start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, brother. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicy.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.